morning we're joined by Dr. Peter Bacon, a well-known Irish economist, former OECD member and former advisor to government. Dr. Peter Bacon, thank you very much for joining us You're this welcome. morning. So we'll start with a bit about yourself. You studied economics to PhD level. To what extent do you think your learnings of economics and the instruments of policy inspired you to be an advisor in government? Well, that, that was the basic reason um, as an undergraduate student uh, in Dublin in the early 1970s it was a difficult time economically and you could see uh, the problems uh, of recession uh, in the street and uh, I felt it was fascinating that there was a subject called economics that could do something about all of this so I did pursue it and I have spent most of my career as an advisor uh, either in Ireland or in other countries and, and for the, the OECD as you mentioned and, and the World Bank. Yeah. Uh, basically trying to apply the, the, the skills and exactly. tools of economics to real world problems. Yeah. That inspiration is very similar to me actually because as we said I'm just finished in university in geography and political science and we're learning you know economies, what works, what hasn't worked. Uh, different theories, different models, and many of my peers would be inspired, you know, to act, to go into policy. But we're sort of, I don't know, we, we're put off by the politics of politics. Do you think that there'll ever be a cabinet in Ireland or indeed internationally that it will just be made up of people specialist in certain areas, be it planning or finance or economics, that, that just want to change? No, I don't think so. Um, I, I think. Uh and it probably wouldn't be a good thing even if it did happen because uh, democracy re relies on having a broad spectrum I think of, yeah. of, of experience. What is important of course is that you get um, you know, experienced politicians who, who know how to use the skills of specialists yeah. Yeah. and can apply them and or not apply them as the case may be. Um, but I think specialists and experts yeah should always be behind politicians. Yeah. They don't make good politicians. Yeah. Uh, you were a leading voice during the financial crisis in Ireland. To what extent do you think we could have done anything relating to you know, models or theories? Or do you think that we will really, you know, economies evolve with the market and it's hard to hard to I think plans. one of the big lessons that will emerge it has yeah. already begun to emerge is that economics didn't didn't uh, have any ready-made solutions to the problems that were there yeah. uh, they were new problems and the kinds of models that economists used mm -hmm. are based on historical data yeah. and yeah, historical yeah. data just don't capture a big new event so I think economics was left uh, trailing and wanting in yeah. terms of, of providing uh, short-term solutions. Mm -hmm. They're coming now. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and maybe for the next... next well, generation. I think the important thing is the one that you say, that policy yeah. is always going to be evolving. It will always be different. It, it will change. And, and the big issue for economists, I think, is, is to be able to learn how to evolve the tools that they use the, of course. Uh, and, and to apply them to a situation. Mm -hmm. So I think there, there will never be escaping you know, the judgment of experience um, that you can bring to bear yeah. on what's happening. Yeah. And you studied to PhD level as we discussed. Where do you sit on staying in, ed in education versus going into the real world and getting experience? Or do you think it's better to return to education maybe if you find a niche that you want to explore? Well, I think it's, it's certainly a question of both. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the world is full of uh, nerdy people yes. who can't yeah. apply themselves yeah. to real life yeah. problems. Yeah. Who, 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 when in a situation, in a business situation, wouldn't be able to react? Yeah, they're possibly. lost. Yeah. Lost. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a question of, of amalgamating the two, of, mm -hmm. of bringing social sciences uh, and the tools of social yeah. sciences yeah. to bear on real life yeah. situations, but also to experience real life situations. Yeah. That, uh, there's no substitute for that. Yeah. And there's no school for it no. other than the school of yeah. the street. That brings me nicely onto my next point. Do you, people have you know, certain constraints. Do you think that if someone has a passion or a goal or feels that there's something that they need to achieve or a purpose that they're, they're meant to fulfill, that they can overcome constraints with intelligent 
movement intelligent action towards well, I think the most those. important thing is to know what your passion is for yeah. uh, and to to have a clear view uh, on what it is that you want to do and I think once there's a will uh, you'll find a way um, yeah. provided you're prepared to take the setbacks yeah. um, that inevitably uh, you meet on the on the road course, to, a yeah. to a discovery or yeah. to a solution to yeah. a problem. So, or you want to be a platform for people to share their positive actions, things that are you know making positive impacts on society. Do you th do you believe in this sharing model? Do you think that it it can it can be an inspiration for the next generation? Yeah, I, th I think the, the the interdisciplinary approach. Yes, um, yeah. as you would know from the OECD, you're working absolutely. With the OECD. Um, you know. Different skills, um, you know, it's an old cliche, you get a PhD for knowing everything about nothing. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, so I think it's, you know, the more specialised people yeah. become, the more narrow yeah. they become. I think, I think as long as you're all, you all have a common goal, exactly. everyone brings something different to the table. And somebody needs to be able to see what that something different is yeah. and the value that each uh, discipline can bring. Yeah. Uh, to, to advance to, because the solutions the world, the problems the world faces and, and the solutions are becoming increasingly complex as exactly. society grows more yeah, complex. Yeah, yeah. And who has inspired you throughout your, your life? Has it been people you've met or, as you said, what you've learned in well, college? Or well, I, I, think, I, think, I think first of all it's what you learn at home. Uh, yes. in the earliest years. Yes. And, as, and as we said, I grew up in very much a news household where news and what was going on in the world yeah. was central. Yes. Uh, so I can, yeah, I can... Yeah, and I think, that. you know, a lot, a lot of what you do is shaped by your childhood and mm -hmm. your views of the world. And, and I think I grew up in a, in a household where hard work was, was, was preached. Yeah. Exactly, it was at its core. Yeah. And that if you were prepared to, to work hard, you would succeed and, and overcome yeah. uh, the problems. And I think that's, that's, that's true of society as a whole. Yeah. And where do you see education, ed education and economics evolving over the next decade? You know, as, as markets change and stuff, will it still, will f models still be at the core? Or will the curriculum be start being revised? Well, we I think I think there will be an evolution. I think models, yeah. uh, formal models, mm -hmm. um, you know, are the structure through which economics expresses itself. Yeah. Um, what it wishes to express and how precisely it does it of is course. going to change and evolve over time. Yeah. Um, I think the big challenge is how to make those models more real life. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah. And more complex, yeah. you know, without becoming so complex that nobody understands what they are mm -hmm. trying to do. Mm -hmm. And education is the running theme here today at our ORU studios. How do you think education can become more accessible to the next generation? Well, I think, you know, the, the big issue is opportun the opportunity of access. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, in, an, in a world where public finance constraints are, are binding where priorities of government are changing, mm -hmm. uh, it's extremely difficult to ensure the equality of access. Of course, yeah. Um, that and I think even, even you know, financially going to college, if somebody lives in, in down the country, in, in Cork or in Cavan, they mightn't be able to afford the bus fare every week to yes. get up. So it's, you know, it's, everything has to be taken into consideration. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it, it, it's not just your tuition or we'll, you, we'll be grant you, you know, immunity from the registration fee. There is the whole cost of living as well, which, which is in danger of, of you know, pushing people yeah, out. So it's a, it's a big issue, yeah. uh, providing those yeah. gateways and channels. Mm -hmm. I think probably uh, what's most important is to identify, you know, people's talents and ensure that they can, that yeah. they can, they can move in a Cultivate. direction. That, the, that exactly talents, yeah. allows those talents to be developed for each individual. Yeah. And finally, Dr. Peter Bacon, what will you put on this earth to do? What is your ultimate oh, ambition? <laughs> That's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure if I know the answer. Yeah. But I hope it's, it's to make it a better place by applying the skills exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. of economics that I have. Uh, yeah. You know, garnered over the yeah. years. I think I think that's what all of us really want to do yeah. in life. We just want to, you know, learn as we go, apply yeah. it, 
for good and as And as certainly education can. is at the core at the, of that. I would, I would agree. Well, that's a nice note to end our education day on. Thank you very much, Dr. Peter Bacon. You're welcome.